Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today we're going to talk about the realities of building hardware. So I've got a project that I'm working on and I want to make this. So this is a character sheet for RPG gaming. And look at this. This is an e-paper display. It's not even hooked up to anything, so it's consuming zero power right now. And I have a pretty decent display going on. This is, I think, seven and a half inches. My goal here was to create a basically a tablet that could last the full gaming session and be able to look at your character sheet, be able to make some modifications during gameplay. Going to be battery powered. I even decided I'd go with a couple of sensors here. This one is a gas gauge, so I could tell how much battery power I have left. It also does charging. But this one here is a gesture sensor, so you could do a swipe up or a swipe down. No contact, have it change pages. I also had a button, a uh, five-way button. I've got one around here somewhere. I don't see it. I even did a uh, PCB for it. And actually, this has that button on it. So I've got a five-way button here that I can control. Place for the microcontroller. Place for uh, the uh, display uh, shield. Basically, there's a, a shield for uh, controlling that e-paper display and for that uh, gesture sensor. So I even designed that, put all of it together, and then prototyped the entire app. Basically, how do I do the display, navigating between pages, navigating uh, between controls? I did that all using Meadow Desktop. So let's take a look at how that looks. You can see over here, I have a core project that has a bunch of things for, not just controllers for the hardware, but uh, doing navigation and display and the ability to have different character sheets for different games, different character classes, things like that. A significant amount of code built out here, especially around all of these layouts. And then I have a desktop, a Meadow F7, and a Raspberry Pi project. But let me just run the desktop to show you what it looks like when I'm debugging and testing. So I run it and it comes up here. If I use the cursor keys, I can move up and down. You can see, it's got this little underline I can move. And so that changes the selected item. So I can go to something and I can change it. And then if I hit the space bar, I can activate it and then up and down changes the actual value. And it even has the logic, you know, uh, in here, if I change this, this changes the modifiers change, that kind of thing. That's all well and good. The application is working. I've got a specific type of character sheet. It has all of the stuff that I want to do. But then I went to drive this actually on the hardware and take a look at what this looks like. First thing it's going to do is draw the whole screen. Notice the flashing. It'll do it about four times. And that's just the way e-ink displays work. Come on, focus. This camera sucks. What this app is doing right now is every 10 seconds, it just pushes the down key for me and it moves the selection. Notice how the hit points, that five is selected now. Now it's gonna go down to the strength modifier. You can see it draws that box. So that's our dirty rectangle. I went through all of the effort to do just partial updates of the display. So it's not even updating the entire display here. And just to do that, you can see how long it takes. So it's going to select here and it takes, looks like about three seconds per update. If I was trying to navigate up and down with buttons or that gesture sensor, you can see it takes about three seconds to go through a field. And even worse, wait till you see when it gets to the bottom here, it's going to do navigating from luck to intelligence but now it's going to go back from intelligence up to armor class and you can see that the dirty rect has to cover both of those so it's going to refresh this entire rectangle so about three to four seconds to update that is just the nature of an e-paper display so while i love this thing for the display and the low power and all of that this is just the way e-paper works. I've done all of the improvements that I can by doing this dirty rectangle. There is nothing else that I can squeeze out of it. So after all of the work that I did, building the code, uh, choosing hardware, 
laying out and ordering a PCB, all of that, the end result is this is totally unacceptable and unusable. I just cannot use this. In reality, I probably should have just started with an Avalonia app for an Android device or an iPad. It would have worked better, certainly would have been faster, but the reality is I wanted to try this with hardware. I liked the idea of e-paper. I liked the idea of a gesture display, some of those kinds of things. I thought it would be a fun project. So I don't consider the project to be a complete waste. No, I didn't end up with the product that I wanted. I don't end up with the thing that I was trying to build, but I did end up finding some bugs in like the e-paper display driver. I fixed those. I did a whole bunch of improvements to the uh, micro layout, which is what I'm using to draw all of these display screens and all of the controls on it. So net effect is a lot of the open source stuff that I used for this got improved. I just didn't end up with the product that I wanted in the end. So now I'll probably just go back and do what I should have done in the first place and do this as an Avalonia app on a commercial tablet. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.